Good evening. Welcome to Grandma's Storytime. Tonight I'm going to read you a story. Now I've got to tell you, the stories were not nearly as popular for me as the TV show was. I think it was Sunday nights. Um, I think it was like six o'clock at night, right before the Ed Sullivan show came on TV that we would watch Lassie. And every time I would watch the Lassie show, I would, I would say, okay, tonight I'm gonna watch a show and I'm not gonna cry. But you know what would happen? Every single Lassie show, I would get scared and I'd get worried because it was always something bad happened and Lassie, the dog Lassie would come in and save everyone. His owner's name was Timmy and he was a cute little boy and his grandpa, uh, Walter Brennan, I don't remember his name other than grandpa in the shows, loved the shows. And so when the first Lassie book came out, well, I gotta tell you, I bought it. From 1960, here is Lassie Finds a Friend. By Teresa, that's all, that's all it says, by Teresa. Oh, and here's a little picture of Timmy. Lassie, look, they're here, Timmy shouted, hopping up and down and pointing at a car coming up the lane. We'll have fun, you and Susan and me. Lassie wiggled all over and barked excitedly. They would have fun. I'm gonna go on the other side. Let's turn the page. The car pulled up and Timmy's cousin Susan opened the door. Susan, hi, yelled Timmy, running toward the car. Arf, yelled Lassie, barking happily. Arf, arf. Cried Susan when she saw Lassie, a dog, make it go away. And she scrambled back into the car and shut the door. What? Lassie stopped barking and she stopped wiggling. Ah, Susan, Timmy coaxed. Lassie's the nicest dog in the world. She won't hurt you. Susan just covered her ears. Timmy sighed. He looked down at Lassie, rubbing her head. Well, Lassie, he said sadly, I guess you'll have to be polite and stay away from Susan until she gets used to you. And so, with a drooping head and a limp tail, Lassie just lay down under the lilac bush and Susan got out of the car. She carried a doll, a yellowed hair doll, wearing a soft blue dress. This is Mary Ann. She said to Timmy, hugging her doll tightly. She doesn't like dogs either. And she marched into the house. Hmm, you think Timmy's going to have very much fun playing with his cousin Susan? Let's see. That night, as Lassie settled down on the rug next to Timmy's bed, Timmy whispered, Don't feel sad, Lassie. Tomorrow we will make Susan like you. And so after breakfast the next morning, Timmy and Lassie played ball. But Susan, well, she just sat on the steps and changed Marianne's dress. Later, Timmy and Lassie played dress up. Susan didn't play, though. She was busy having a make-believe tea party with Marianne. But Lassie thought she saw Susan smile once watching them play. After dinner, Lassie did tricks. She shook hands with Timmy, and she said, please, for a cookie. And she rolled over and played dead. And at that, Susan laughed. In fact, she laughed out loud. Hmm. Timmy was pleased and proud. Lassie, he said, shake hands with Susan. Happily, Lassie romped forward, but then, make her go away shrieked Susan, and she darted into the house, and Timmy sighed. All right, Susan, he called. You don't have to be friends with Lassie if you don't want to. Come on, I'll show you the crick. Timmy and Susan had fun 
putting twigs on dry leaves and watching their little boats go down the water. You see the little boats they made out of dry leaves? Lassie, lying behind a log, watched them play until her eyelids slowly drooped shut. Sorry, this book is very old. It's hard to turn the page. Suddenly, Timmy spied a piece of wood lying nearby. Oh, look, he said, wood for a real boat. He tied a piece of string to it and sent it out into the stream and pulled it back, out and back, out and back. Susan looked down at Mary Ann and had an idea. <gasps> Mary Ann would like to go on a boat ride, she said. And so the little boat went out with a passenger on it. Timmy and Susan watched their boat bob in the water. Then Timmy started to bring it back to shore. Suddenly the little boat teetered. Mary Ann wobbled and then... While Timmy and Susan watched, she slipped into the water and was carried downstream. Mary Ann! Susan wailed. How will we get her back? Timmy looked around. Lassie, where are you? Let's see. Lassie was sound asleep, her nose twitching gently as a fly buzzed near. Timmy and Susan ran along the bank, following the bobbing doll. Lassie! Timmy called again desperately, and still Lassie didn't hear. But suddenly that bothersome fly settled right on Lassie's nose. Her eyes flew open, and she heard Timmy call, Lassie! With a bound, she was on her feet looking for Timmy. Then she was down at the water's edge, Mary Ann, cried Susan, pointing. Lassie, get Mary Ann, cried Timmy. Lassie just jumped into the water and headed for Mary Ann. Swimming very fast, she followed the doll downstream. Slowly, she reached near. At last, she reached out, caught Mary Ann's dress in her teeth, and turned back toward the bank. Lassie dropped the wet, but safe. Mary Ann in the grass, stopped long enough to shake the water from her coat and then headed back to go hide in the sun. She lay down and closed her eyes. But then, at the sound of footsteps, Lassie opened her eyes. Susan, hugging Mary Ann, dropped down beside her. Lassie, she said softly, holding out her hand. Mary Ann and I... We would like to shake hands with you. You're the nicest dog anywhere. You bet, said Timmy, and now won't we have fun, you and Lassie and me. Arf! Lassie barked happily as she shook hands with Susan. Arf! Arf! Now, without the funness of watching this on TV, I'm not sure if any of you felt like crying when Marianne couldn't reach her doll, but you got a little bit of a taste of how the stories went. I loved them. I hope you enjoyed it. I love you and I miss you. Be good. Good night. Sleep tight.